ship is over now, like they were before. Oh, my soul, worship is over now. Hallelujah. Greetings, everyone. Good morning. Greetings, the mighty of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and soon coming thing. This morning, we continue the journey in Acts, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 20. The 21, we're finishing up the prophecy of Joel as Peter was uh, talking to these uh, uh, onlookers or spectators, I may call them, that was witnessing them being filled with the Holy Spirit and was about to accuse them of many things of which they were not. So Peter was here making it, straightening that things out for them to let them know that this was the fulfillment of prophecy that God has promised to pour His Spirit upon all flesh, and that includes you this morning, if you have not yet been filled with the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we continue here in verse uh, 20, 21 to finish up this prophecy. So let's get in God's word. Hallelujah. Verse 20, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hmm. Hallelujah. Signs. Up, further up in verse 19, yesterday we talked here where it says that, And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. It is good to know what the Bible teaches. Because you see... Lately, there have been a lot of speculations, a lot of assumptions, a lot of things uh, in social media showing of the coming of the Lord, and you know they're just showing this these things in the cloud. <laughs> and you know, if people do not know Scripture, they can be easily deceived, because as you see here, the Bible teaches us here that the coming of the Lord, when 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 that moment comes. There won't be no planet. As a matter of fact, this whole earth will be shaken up. We'll be running for places to hide. The Bible speaks of the fact we'll be, we'll be literally, in the book of Matthew, we'll be literally looking for places to hide. The rocks, will be, we were trying to run to caves and rocks to hide, and the caves and the rocks will be saying to us, we're looking for somewhere to hide too, <laughs> from the awesome presence of Almighty God. So we see here that in order to fully understand scripture, to fully understand prophecy and its fulfillment and its time and season, beloved, we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. It is the Holy Spirit that helps us to understand what lies ahead and what is also unfolding now before our eyes. You see, when you watch the news, the weatherman can only predict what the weather is going to be like. And what are the possibilities? You can only predict. But when the Holy Spirit tells you what it is, it is what it is because He is God and He knows the time and the season in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen? So we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need God's presence because in Him is the past, the presence, and the future. So everything in God is always present. Everything in God is always present, fulfilling right before our eyes. So we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. As I read this this morning, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. I kind of asked myself the question, was it, it, what it what it is that China knows, France and many of these countries knows that they're not telling the masses? Because I read in an article several months back that China is building a sun, an artificial sun, you know, that, that got to cost some serious billions of dollars. And other countries are building these, these things that, you know, when you read scripture, though, you kind of say to yourself, uh, do, do they know something that we don't know? You know, because why would they be make, trying to make artificial sun as if like, you know, they, 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 that something is coming down, down, coming down the road that they know about that, that a lot of us don't know anything about. Why would they be building an artificial sun or artificial moon or whatever? Why would they be doing this? 
unless they know or they see something, some kind of sign in the sky, because the Bible talk of this, that something going to happen, something dramatic going to happen, something, something going to happen by which the whole earth going to go dark. So they're preparing themselves to make sure at least they have some kind of light. But as I thought of this, I said to myself, you know, everything is held up by gravity. The hurt that the only reason why we don't fall off this earth is because of gravity. Gravity holds us down. If there was no gravity, we'd be floating all up in the space. <laughs> we'd be sucked up into space and we'd all be all over with it. We would not be, we'll be able to walk on this planet. So it is gravity that, 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 that makes the stars and planets not collide because of these magnetic fields you know, that pushes each other away from each other. It is gravity. So if so if the sun gonna be falling from the sky and the moon and all this type of stuff gonna be happening, it means that gravity is not gonna be present. Mm -hmm. So the question now becomes how are they gonna be able to put these things up in the sky? So a godless man, no matter how, how brilliant they are, I realize in one case they may have the brilliance and the money to demonstrate and show off their power and all that, all that kind of stuff, but they're always lacking one thing, the wisdom of God in their lives. So now we may understand why these countries are building these things. They're expecting something to happen, and they want to be ready for it. If there is anything we, we know is that when we look at the temptation of our Lord on the mount when the devil was tempting him, the devil was quoting scriptures to him. So the devil knows scriptures. A lot of world leaders and men like those who, they seem like they, they, might, they might be as very as satanic as, as you may think, but I'm pretty sure they have scholars and people around them who can say, hey, look, look at this here in, in, in the book of Acts. You know, look at this right here. They, they, know, they, they do. They consult all kind of... Uh, clairvoyance and and, and, and and psychics and, and, and all this type of stuff they do. I hate to say it. But the Catholic Church does that. They have things called the augury in which they follow things, the migration of birds and things like that to study the planets and the cosmos. As a matter of fact, they have uh, these um, these uh, things that astronomers use I forgot the name of it, but they, these things that they use, they, they look into the sky to study the stars and the planets. They have got several of them around in different parts of the world, on different mountains, by which they look through these things. I think it's called binoculars or what it is, but I forgot what they call this place. They have these things that they use to study the stars and the planets to see what's going on. So now we see why these countries are making these things. Because they know there is a, something is about to happen. Beloved, me and you don't have to be concerned about building stars and pla or about building a sun or getting a flashlight and all that kind of stuff because we're not going to need it. Because when the Lord comes, we're going to go up with Him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen? <laughs> we're going to be going up with Him. We're not going to be hanging around to watch no, like, some spectacular moment and all kind of stuff. It's not going to happen. Nations are building uh, military armies, you know, super power, super type armies to fight. The question becomes, fight who? The Bible speaks of the day of Armageddon. A lot of people forget about Armageddon. And people, a lot of people speculate that it's going to be the, 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 the Ch Chinese army who are going to be and, 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 uh, and uh, Russia. Uh, these countries are going to be coming across the Middle East and they're really going to be coming across because they want to destroy Israel. So there's a place in, in, in the Middle East called the place of Armageddon where there should be this war, this bloodshed war. The Bible says, speak of the, 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 the blood going to be so much almost to a horse's height, the amount of blood that's going to be shed. A lot of these are coming down the road. It's prophecy. It's prophecy. So now when we see this here in the Bible, it says, and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. We know that 
the, if these things don't happen and have not yet happened and it's happening, then any so-called coming of the Lord that people are saying, they will, you know, the Lord is coming in the cloud. No, if this doesn't happen, then beloved, whoever it is, is an antichrist. I repeat it one more time. If this does not happen before the Lord comes, and people say there is the coming of the Lord or any, any such sign or any such one, it is an antichrist. Because of these things have to be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but none of my words shall pass, pass away until all be fulfilled. That's the word of God. That is the word of God. So stay in scripture and know the time and the season we are living in so we do not follow social media and follow the game, that's what things that are going on out there that contradict scripture. Stay in scripture. So that no matter what the rumor or no matter what the Antichrist or, or because the Bible teaches us in the book of Luke, in the last days, there are going to be many, many Christ. The Bible said, low here and low there. Right? But the Bible tells us that me and you, Christ dwells within us. That is, the Holy Spirit is within us. The one who will let us know what is lie and what is truth. So we must have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We must be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Because there's too much going on. A lot of deception. A lot of lies. And it's hard to sort through it without the power of the Holy Spirit. He's the one who helps us to determine light from light, darkness from darkness. He is the one that helps us to know the truth. He is the one that comes to set us free from all the lie and wickedness of the devil and Satan and his minions in this earth. So stay in fellowship with the Holy Spirit and be filled with the Holy Spirit, beloved, just as these brethren are being filled with the Holy Spirit so that no matter what, we walk in truth. No matter what's going on, we can see the truth for what it is and glorify God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen? We must do this, beloved. We must. We must. You cannot go no be oh, Glory be to God. You cannot live without the Holy Spirit. Mm -mm. It doesn't make no sense. It doesn't make no sense, beloved. So here in verse 21, it says, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This kind of gives hope. And I'm a little resistant to this in the sense of saying that, uh, you know, when you read in the book of Revelation, of those who are being raptured and then th there are those who are left behind. As a matter of fact, the hope is that in the second coming of the Lord, when all this is being poured out, his wrath is being poured out upon the earth and people are screaming and dying and, and, and running for place to hide from his awesome presence. It's good to know that there is hope during this time because there are many teachings to say that there is no hope during this time. That's it. But there is hope during this time because the Bible is teaching us here that during all of this that's going on here, the moon, everything becomes dark, there's chaos, a tsunami all over the earth. The Bible says there is hope during all of this chaos. There is hope. Because it says here to, to us that those who, those who are left behind, those who are whosoever calls on the name of the Lord during this time shall be saved. But beloved, for me and you that's in the future, we're not sure, I mean the Lord can come right now as I'm talking, or he can come tomorrow or in the future, but no one knows the hour, time or season in which he is coming. And if anyone is sitting down there doing this nonsense like the, about a couple of years ago when this man was putting up his, his billboard all over the, the places of the predicting the time as to the coming of the Lord when the Lord had already said no one knows the time of the hour that's in the hands of the Father. Beloved, we don't, we don't follow no nonsense like that. No one knows the hour of the coming of the Lord God. No one knows. But if I were in your shoe right now, beloved, I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't anticipate 
I would simply, in this very moment and this very hour, before these terrible things begin to happen upon the earth, before all of this chaos and, and you name it, and confusion begin to happen upon the earth, and everything begin to move out of its natural order, if I were you, at this very moment, I would fall down on my knee, prostrate fall, and ask of the Lord Jesus Christ to be Lord and God of my life. I will simply give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. That shut down anything that will happen hereafter. A seconds after, a minute after, I will simply, at this very moment, before all of this comes, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord and God of my life today. I give you my heart, Lord. You are truly the Son of the living God. Truly you were born of Virgin Mary. Walk this earth, teach the gospel, suffered and died and Calvary's cross my sin. I am grateful and I am thankful, Lord. I repented of my sins before you, Lord, this day. Be my Lord and my God. Be my Savior. And you can ask of the Lord God and by His grace for the Holy Spirit's presence to fulfill and live in your life and begin to change you from darkness to light. Let this be your day, beloved. We do not want to wait another second, another hour, because no one want to be in this moment. That is Prophet Joel spoke of. No one want to be in that moment, beloved. No one want to be in that moment. So let this be your day that you give your life to the Lord God in spirit and in truth and glorify Him as your Lord and your Father and your God. And your life will be changed forever. So you'll be able to walk in the Spirit and see in the Spirit. And by the Lord God governing your life and transforming you each and every day, you'll be able to be holy as He is holy as he work on you on the inside out and make you a son and his child. This is your day of salvation. This is your day of deliverance. This is your day, a new day, in the light and the glory of God. May God bless you. May God be with you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, today we pray. Amen and amen.